Good evening and welcome to the BBS News. My name is Stephen Iscock and we have Pirates in Virgil. Grade 4 to 5 share the reports. Our CMP recruitment session. Town Council report with Mayor Barter. And more. On November the 22nd, Newfoundland Hydro had a power interruption from 1 to 5 p.m. Areas affected from this was residents of Ron McDonald's and Bruce Thatcher along Main Street. The purpose of the outage was to upgrade the distribution system. On October the 22nd, the Bay softball team had a bake sale at the school. A total of $478 was raised. Special thanks to all that took part and donated. The food hamper was won by Matthew Mead. On October the 23rd, homeroom teacher Mrs. Hand invited me over to listen to the grade 4 and 5 students reports on interviews with their grandparents about their lives when they were young and how it has changed. I took part as well and they had a bit of fun afterwards. Let's have a look. My name is Diego. I am going to report on my poppy Walter Norfka. He is born in Rania. September 23rd, 1954, and grew up in Ramia. You got anything about your pop? The kinds of toys he had was a toy car and toy boats, wooden boats. For Christmas, he got <coughs> cars and socks. He, the kinds of food <coughs> we ate were he, he had bird, fish, moose, rabbit, and caribou. <coughs> How old was you when you had your first job? I was 15 years old when I had my first job. I worked at the fish plant for slaving fish. Gone. Hi, Diego. You said your papa, Walter Marka, used to play with like toy boats and toy cars. How was that different from the things that you play with? What kind of things do you play with now? I play with most electronics and iPods and more patrol cars. Perfect. Thanks. My name is Jared Mead. I was entering my pop, interviewing my poppy. Um, you didn't know a full half one until he was 12 because he always got a half one. And he used to always have to use the can to go poop and pee. My name is Lily, and I interviewed my nan Bertha. She she was born in Milltown, and she had lots of pets. She had horses, dogs, cats, rabbits, ducks, goose, hens, and probably more. For Christmas, she'd get a stick of gum, fruit, which was an apple and an orange and a coloring book and her favorite holiday was birthday because her dad used to come home on her birthday she, for ten, if she had 10 cents she'd always go to the store and buy some a bar um five five cents with a couple of candies and you could also get a uh, chips out of it Hey Lily, you said for Christmas mm -hmm. your nan used to get a stick of gum or an, a certain kind of fruit. Mm -hmm. How is that different than what we get for Christmas? What kinds of things do you get for Christmas? Lots of candy and lots of other toys and games and stuff. And our, tree, our trees will be full and our stockings will be full. That's but they only had one little stocking and that was all they'd get. That's true. And you also said your nan used to spend 10 cents on a, on a bar. Mm -hmm. What kinds of things can we buy for 10 cents? Um, sometimes yeah. you can buy for for 5 cents one little thing of gum at, uh, what's it called? Uh, drug yeah, drugstore, but it's not actually that good gum. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So things are really different, right? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Lily. Hi, I am Caitlin Coley. I interviewed my pop dad, Young. He grew up, he grew up um, in Gray River in 1938 on June 12th. And when after school and nighttime snacks, he ate was he had toast and tea and toffees and molasses candies. Um, the pets they had were cats, but animals were around were sheep, lambs, cows, and pigs. Um, their school was a run, one room school and church, and they had 27 kids in the whole entire class from grade one to nine. That was all the things we there. And at recess, they drank coca milk and cod liver oil. And my pop's favorite holiday was picnic day because he ran uh, races and they got prizes. The prizes were mostly just pencils and exercises, but I still enjoyed it. And things costed back then for uh, five candy for a penny, a hundred pound flour for ten dollars, a bottle of pop for ten cents, and sixteen cents for a can of milk. Thank you very much. Thanks, Caitlin. You said that your pop um, for a no time snack used to have. Toast, tea, toffees, molasses, buns, what kinds of things? Is that similar to us, or what kinds of things do you like to have for a lunch? Um, I like to have mostly chips and candies and bars and just uh, sweet things. Sweet things? And what about, um, you said the animals that were there then? Yeah. Is that similar to what we have now in Virgil? Yeah. Or what kinds of animals do we have? We have cats, dogs, that's yeah. mostly what we have here. Thanks. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Kayla Parsons, and I interviewed my Nan Dumford. Her name is Sharon. She was born in 1956, and here in Burgeau, and she grew up in Francois. Uh, there was ten children in her family, and there was 30 people in her class. And her first job was a clerk at the shop at age 16. Okay, so you said in your Nan's family there was 10 children. Is that similar or different to what kinds of families we have now? It's different because there's not as many people in your family now. People have, are starting to have smaller families, yeah. right? Okay, thanks, Kaylee. My name is Ethan Benoit. My I interviewed my Papi McDonald. His favorite toy was cat buns, and what he got for Christmas was cat buns and candy. Yeah. My name is George McDonald. I'm interviewing my name, Linda McDonald. How many people were in your family with child? She had eight people, but one of her um, sisters or brothers died, I think. What what kinds of toys did she have? She and her favorite toy was the walking doll. She used to get all kinds of dolls. Um, she what did she do in her spare time? She used to play outside with her friends. She used to play hopscotch at her spare time. She used to get dolls, socks, and mittens. For Christmas, she used to get her. She used to eat fish, moose, birds, beans, and meat. And her favorite um, holiday she used to celebrate was Easter. She used to get eggs. Okay, Georgia, you said in your Nan's spare time she used to like play hopscotch. Is that different or similar to what you like to do? What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I. Play it, trap, pillar, go on my phone, or go on my mom's laptop. So do you think that they had phones and laptops and Xboxes back then? Nope. But her hopscotch was different. She used to take a crown and marker and draw it because she never had no chop. Mm -hmm. So she used to take that. 
can draw on a roof. Cool. Thanks, Georgia. Hi, my name is Allison Anderson, and I interviewed my great uncle Cyril. He was born in Grand Bret on October 31st, 1931. He grew up in Grand Bret. I have five brothers and six sisters. Um, for his spare time, he brought in coal, water, wood, and went berry picking and worked in the garden. Uh, what was your school like? It was a two-classroom school. You stayed in one room up to grade five. Then you went to the other classroom. I only went as far as grade seven. There was a potbelly stove for heat, and we had a slate to write our notes on and scribblers for homework. These were light exercises only made of brown paper. What did you use for heat and lights? We used a stove that burned wood and coal for heat and kerosene lamp for light. Thanks, Allison. You said your Uncle Cyril, in his spare time, you listed out all kinds of chores that he used to do. What kind of chores do you have to do now? Um, feed my pets, which is a gerbil, dog, and fish. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes I help mom fold up the clothes. Mm -hmm and lay the table, and that's it. Perfect. Thanks. My name is Dakota Nalka. I am in my name, Nalka. There was 13 people in the whole family as a children, seven brothers and four sisters, mom and dad. Okay, Dakota, if she had 13 people in her family, is that a lot like what our families are like today? No. No come. We don't have we don't have thirteen people in our family. So are they bigger or are they smaller? Small. Smaller should I? Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Hello, my name is Stephen Scott. Twenty years ago I had to do the same assignment in school. I interviewed my grandmother Tiscott and she told me that at the time there was no birds or roll. So when Poppy had to go in and kill moose, he had to walk. 20 kilometers in over road and kill the moose and then skin it and bring it back on his back and also um, what else if they were bad they used to get coal in their stockings if they were good they might get fruit as one of you kids said might get a half apple back then luxury was not a big thing um, they had no electricity they use uh, kerosene uh, lanterns. Um, some other things like uh, when the telephones come in place, there was two people on one line. So if somebody called in, uh, called one person, and one person had a phone, only one person might be able to afford a telephone. So what they would have to do is, if they called their house, they would have to go and get the other person to come down and answer the telephone and at school they used to you mean they had to walk to school whether it was rain snow or whatnot and as one other kid said they had a pot belly stove and burn coal and it was a hard hard time as he said so uh yeah that was share what my grandmother experienced when she was alive any questions yeah. Did I have to go in a can, or did my grandmother did? No, did you have to empty it? Uh, no, I was born at the time when that stuff was pretty much common in place. Yes, she did. Back then, all the bathrooms was pretty much outside. And my grandmother, right till she passed, she still used a chamber pot in her bedroom. She was sat in that way and wished that if she didn't have to get up and go to the bathroom, she didn't have to. Right. Any more questions? She was 90 years old. <laughs> yeah, she was a very smart woman. Any other questions? Did she have gray hair? She did have gray hair, yeah. She had gray hair for a long time, as far as I remember. Yes. Sure. 
I do very much. My grandmother was like a second mother to me, and she treated me like one of her own, like one of her sons. A lot like your grandparents treat you, right? A lot of people in your articles with their grandparents. Yeah. Georgia, you have a question? Did she have any more? She did, yeah. She had, uh, I'm not exactly sure how many, but she did. Okay. Thanks, Steve. No problem. Hello. 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 We On October 23rd, the RCMP had their recruitment session, career presentation at the school, and was open to the public and students. The presentation consisted of what is involved in becoming a police officer and all the information re required if you would like to become one. So I will have the full video for you aired on Monday, October 28th at 7.30. So I hope you enjoyed the look at the past last week. I do not have one this week, but this coming Tuesday, October 29th at 7.30, I will be hearing this year in review for 1989. It is a nice look at back at that year. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So that is Tuesday, October 29th at 7.30. On October the 24th, members of the 157 Bob Bartlett was at Foodland and took part in a poppy drive. All donations were greatly appreciated. If you haven't, Got a poppy and want one? Look in stores around town and get yours for Remembrance Day. So November is coming around and some people call it Movember. So I've decided this year that I am going to start a Movember team in support of prostate cancer. So if you would like to know more, you can go to Movember.com. If you would like to support me in this matter, you can come down to the BBS and donate and put in your name and forms. Or even if you would like to join my team and participate as well, you can sign up on the website or you can just come down, get a sponsor sheet and get donations. And then at the end, we'll put all the money into, into, the, into the website. So I think this is a great cause. I've never did this before, so my team name is Steel Dragons. If you are looking for it on Movember.com, I would appreciate for as many people to participate as possible. This should be a community effort, if possible. So, uh, some rules here is uh, once registered at Movember or sign up with my team, each mobile must begin the 1st of November with a clean shaven face. For the entire month of November, each mole bro must grow and groom a mustache. There is to be no joining of the mole to your sideburns. That's considered a beard. There is to be no joining of handlebars to your chin. This is considered a goatee. Each mole bro must conduct himself like a true gentleman. So, as long as you got a mustache, you can curl it up, do it up any way he wants, it just cannot join your chin or join to your hairline. So, if you would like to participate, come down, get a sheet, or go on the website, join my team, and support this for prostate cancer. So, before we get to the town council report, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and thank you to the volunteers. And we do have the audio issue straightened up now, thank God. So my name is Stephen Niscock. Thank you so much for watching. And here is Mayor Barter with the town report. Good night. Good evening. The town council held its regular meeting on October the 16th. The meeting began with the swearing in of the newly elected councillors, Stephen Hiscock, Lorna Ricketts, and Krista Standing. 
Council welcomes our three new members. That means that the Town Council now has its full slate of seven. Uh, Councillor Porter and Deputy Mayor Ingram and myself attended a joint council meeting organized by our MHA, Andrew Parsons, uh, in Marguerite early in October. Basically, that council invite, invites uh, mayors and councillors from uh, the small communities in the uh, MHA's area, so it would be Isla Mort, Portobasque, um, Burgio, Ramia, Rose Blanche, and down to La Poyle and, and so forth. And we discuss um, issues, I guess, that affect us all, uh, the ferry system, for example, the condition of our roads, those types of uh, topics come to the agenda. There was also uh, two presentations, one on the roles and responsibilities of council and what municipalities is all about, and the other was on tourism. And the one on tourism um, raised some discussion for us. Um, if you look at the Traveler's Guide, for example, that's put out by the Department of Tourism, there is very little information for tourists on the Burgio and surrounding areas. Nothing, for example, about sand and sea, nothing about our uh, bed and breakfast and so on. Uh, so we're looking into inviting uh, Laura Walborn in uh, to speak to council and invite the other towns in this area to attend as well. The focus is to get more emphasis on tourism in this area. I spoke with, uh, uh, with the uh, RCMP uh, earlier in the month. I you know, had a meeting set up and have since then uh, written a letter to Superintendent uh, Paul Dowden, who's responsible for District West, uh, under which we find our detachment, uh, concerning policing services in this area. Uh, there has been a decrease in, uh, in service. We have one RCMP officer that is leaving at the end of the month. Uh, there is no one at this point in time to take his place. Uh, other than uh, my understanding is uh, having RCMP officers come out on a weekly basis from the Stephenville area. And uh, so we would like to invite Superintendent Dowden in to, to discuss this uh, to see if we can get back on a, uh, a firmer footing, I guess, with a consistency of policing in our community. Council is also looking uh, at our next meeting uh, to developing a long-term plan. And uh, basically, you know, what that does is, excuse me, is it simply sets the goals, I guess, for council for our four-year term, uh, gives us a, a vision uh, to look to down the road as to the things that we feel have to be done, things that we'd like to see done, and so on and so forth. Um, so once that plan is completed, there will be a copy in the town office that, that people can look at, and um, there will probably be some sort of information session on Channel 10. On October 23rd, our office clerk uh, attended a training session on budgeting in Stephenville. Uh, there was one committee report during our meeting. That was the building committee. There was approval given for two sheds, uh, both of which were 12 by 16 in size, uh, one at 5 Messrs Road and the other at uh, 20B Smalls Island. Uh, and there was a concern, I think, expressed by some citizens with regard to the, um, the rock going out on the point uh, where Melbourne's house used to be. That was taken over. Um, by the by the government, uh, they took the house down, and it's my understanding that they are planning on widening the road in that area. However, it's not class classified by government, um, you know, as a safety issue. Basically, what they were uh, interested in doing was uh, clearing the rock out of it, widening the road there so that it would be easier to uh, to clear snow. So it's not on their priority list. 
and they explained that to send equipment out to this area just to do that project uh, would be uh, an exorbitant cost. And uh, so what they say they're doing is they're waiting for other work, and that when that other work uh, happens and they send a piece of equipment out, then they will widen that area at that time. We've had contact uh, from a company called Biomax um, wa uh, Wastewater Solutions concerning uh, wastewater. And this really is a, you know, a, a preliminary uh, contact. The federal government is uh, discussing wastewater, affluent wastewater, or sewage in other words, and um, are saying that by 2020 uh, there will be no affluent waste going into our main waterways, and of course, uh, ours does. And so there are companies out there who will contact towns and um, to discuss the different types of uh, solutions that they have. Um, this company has contacted us, and we've invited them in, uh, you know, for a session with council just so that we can bring ourselves up to uh, you know, what is happening in the rest of Canada and what types of solutions are out there. Because down the road, um, we feel that those types of decisions are going to be made. So those types of meetings are to educate us. Um, one of the main projects that we have been looking at, two of the main projects actually that we have been looking at, um, that began with former council and has now been carried over to uh, the new council, existing council, is the water line replacement and chlorination upgrade. These two we continue to work on, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, to, um, to get permission to have uh, engineering design uh, done uh, in 2014, uh, ready or to get it done so that it's ready uh, for a planned construction in uh, in 2014. We received a letter from uh, a, a group in, in Burgio led by Stanley Strickland regarding the Cape Royal uh, Memorial. Uh, they would like to do some work on it. It's deteriorating. And uh, Council has offered their services and equipment as a contribution to that, uh, to that initiative. And we thank the committee uh, for for taking that uh, that initiative on for our community. The next regular meeting of council is tentatively scheduled for November the 20th at 7.30 p.m. Thank you and good evening. Mm -hmm.